and I'm going to say welcome, everybody. Um, this is the first time we are, uh, the first time I am doing a, an event like this um, with my partner in crime here, Kara Wolf, who is a portfolio career musician, a professional website designer for musicians, and an oboist herself, um, and will introduce herself in a moment. Uh, we are going to spend the next hour um, allowing our brains to be picked by you, for you, any like piece of information or uh, request for a philosophical rant or like whatever is coming up for you and is interesting for you in these realms of um, in these realms of being an oboist, being a professional, being an online entrepreneur, leading programs, building websites, anything like that is going to be fair game. Um, I have everybody muted right now, and I would invite you to engage in the chat at any point. Um, like, ask us things. That's what we're here for. And we're going to start out. I'm going to start out by letting, by encouraging, by inviting Kara to introduce herself to the room. Hello, thank you. <laughs> it is so wonderful to be here. Um, I've been really excited about doing this collaboration. So I'm Kara Wolf. Um, I am an oboist, um, as Jeanette mentioned, and I also play traditional Celtic flute. Um, I have done the whole freelance music career. I teach um, adjunct music at Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. I've performed with our local symphony. Um, played in small chamber groups, taught a private studio, done all that. And additionally, I do website design. I started Carl Wolf Design about 10 years ago. It's a small um, small business marketing agency um, located here in Durango, where I've done marketing, graphic design, and websites for local businesses. And last year, I launched Websites by Cara which is a boutique Squarespace website agency for musicians in particular. So there's a little crossover between the two businesses, but right now, these days, I'm mostly specializing in Squarespace website design and website templates for musicians. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. You do everything, Cara. <laughs> um, I will also introduce myself briefly. Uh, I am Janet Engel. And I am a professional performing oboist. I also run a ton of group programs for oboists and for musical entrepreneurs. I've been running a, an oboe reed business since 1998 and have grown it into a six-figure enterprise with multiple uh, subcontractors working underneath me, although I'm still hand-finishing all of the reeds. Um, I have grown a an audience on YouTube. I have grown an audience on Facebook. I was a heavy blogger back when blogging was a thing. And since then, I have written a book, The Happiest Musician. And I'm the podcast host of the Crushing Classical podcast. Um, no doubt there are more things. Oh, and I'm a business and career coach for musicians. No doubt there are more things that I'm forgetting because my portfolio career is vast and expansive. And it is my passion to help musicians and creative people and oboists to find their way to flourishing and thriving in the world. I want to see more creatives uh, thriving so that so that our world is a better place, honestly. Um, and that is my, that's me, that's why I'm here. Kara, can I start by asking you a question? And I'll, I'll before I start, um, as a reminder, everybody, please feel free to drop questions, observations, reflections, thoughts in the chat at any time. Like Kara and I will be the ones speaking, but I would love this to be an interactive experience. And we're going to start um, with a question that I received in email. And it's a, a, a broad question. I need to redo my entire website. I'm a total novice. Do you have any suggestions? Cara? Y yes, I do. <laughs> so this is actually a frequent question. Um, I get this a lot in my circles as well, where musicians are coming to me and they just don't even know where to start. So here's where I would say 
you can start. If you want to build your own website, if your goal is to do a, a DIY do-it-yourself website, which is a great option if you're just starting out, if you want to keep the budget really low, I would recommend starting with either Squarespace or Wix. So those are both website platforms where you can go on and build a website. So what's great about what options we have in 2024 is we don't need to have extensive programming knowledge or website experience to build a beautiful website. And these two platforms are the ones I recommend. The other platforms on the market are either too simple and don't have enough options to build an extensive website, something you can grow into, or they're too complicated. So that would be step number one. The next step would be to find a template. Now, my recommendation is before you go template hunting um, to take out a piece of paper and write down all the pages you want in your website. Um, so about page, maybe a service page for lessons. Um, you might want to shop, a blog, just write down the pages you want or the pages you think you might want. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It could be a homepage and a contact page and a lesson page. And then any notes about functionality. Do you want to connect to something like MailChimp, something like that? And then we can go template hunting. And the reason I recommend writing everything down first before you go template hunting is because as soon as you open up um, the template selections on Squarespace or Wix, um, you're gonna, you might get overwhelmed, right? There's a lot of different templates. So if you have a list of everything you want, you can just really quickly go through and be like, nope, 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 maybe, yes. <laughs> so I recommend looking for a template that's about 80% of what you need. Um, and this can be 80% of what you're looking for visually, 80% of the pages you already need. You're probably not going to find something that's 100%. And so don't make yourself crazy trying to find something that's perfect. They're templates. They're going to be slightly um, generic. And so you find a template you like and you go forward. So for Wix, they offer a free, um, you can start for free and build your website for free and they don't make you pay a hosting fee until you're ready to remove all of the branding and the ads. So that's a free way to start, test out the platform. Uh, Squarespace, if you do it yourself, they give you a two week free period, but I recommend um, emailing me because as a Squarespace Circle member, I get six months, a six month free trial. So, and I do these installations for free so that I can pass on my extended free trial to you all. So if you have me install your template of choice, you get six months to build your website completely for free and 20% off of hosting when the time comes to launch it. So I'm a Squarespace fan, and probably that theme is going to come up a little bit as, as we talk. Um, I think their design platform is a little more intuitive. It's a lot like Canva, very drag and drop. Um, and I feel like the back end allows for a lot of customizations, and there's an incredible community. Like anything you want to Google, you add the word Squarespace to it, and you can pretty much figure out how to do anything. There's a ton of free resources out there. Um, so that's where I'd start. You figure out what you want on your site, find a template that works, and you have those free trial periods to give it a shot. That is great information, Cara, like a ton of really good stuff right away. Can I follow up with a question Yes. Uh, that sparked for me in that? Um, mm -hmm. When you're thinking, if you have, if you do not have a website or you have not started one before, what pages do you want? What's important for a musician to have on their public facing like square of internet real estate? I love that question. It is such an important question. So I would recommend reverse engineering what you want on your website based on the actions you want people to take. So if you are a private music instructor, your, your primary action is going to be you want people to contact you to sign up for lessons. If you have a, an oboe read business, your primary conversion, the action you want people to take is to be to purchase your products. So a website can have several, there can be several things that you want your website to do. You might want to have people contact you for lessons and you also want to sell reads and you also want to maybe share a course and it can have multiple things, but build it based on priorities. So pick the number one thing that you think your website can do best. 
and make that front and center. You know, make sure it's on the top navigation. Make sure it's the very first thing on the home page. Make sure you have a page dedicated to that primary thing. And then the other things can be kind of background. So it really depends on what you want your website to accomplish. But when I build out websites for people and when I build out my templates, um, it's very much centered on what's the primary objective. So for example, I just built a template for solo performers and it's very much centered around, you know, the events page and their media and YouTube videos and headshots and things like that. But it doesn't mean that it can't have a service page if they want to do lessons on the side um, or a blog or things like that. But it wouldn't be something that's, you know, featured on the homepage, basically. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, should we should we dive into the other question? Let's do. Let's okay. So this was another question we received via email. It says, "Where to start? More in terms of concept than technical details." Well, I mean, this is the world's broadest question, and I welcome uh, the person who asked it to give us some context in the chat if you would like but as i was thinking about like what what do i tell someone who wants to start anything um what i really love is first imagine what you want it to look like and the, the starting part is always scary, right? The, the part where we go from zero, I do not have a mission outside of the thing I'm already doing. Zero, I do not have visibility in another realm. I do not have an income stream other than the one I'm already doing. That step from zero to one to I am baby stepping my way into a new idea, a new uh, way of being, a new income stream or a new business. Um, that is a huge step. And there are so many ways that you could start. It gets really scary. It gets very paralyzing. So my idea is this. Start by dreaming it out. Let's just put yourself five years in the future and imagine that this thing you are thinking about, this chamber music series, this repair business, this uh, whatever it is, this like website design empire that Kara is building. Five years from now, what does it look like? What kinds of people are coming to you? What kinds of people are you helping? If you're building a private studio, five years from now, once it's established, what? how many people do you have? At what kinds of levels? How are you working with them? What kinds of special things are differentiating? your studio from other things that you're seeing online. And once you have that idea, that vision for like, what is it gonna look like five years from now? Then we can step backwards to the baby step of what do we do now? Because inevitably there's going to be um, a messy period of I am iterate, I'm trying things, I am iterating them, I am discovering what works for me well and what doesn't really work for me as well. All of that is going to happen, but you can't get into that iteration and that exploration until you start. So the baby step might be, I have this idea and I'm going to talk to two or three people that I already know in my world and get their opinions, their insights, their ideas about, uh, about, about this. I'm going to talk to some people who I think might be ideal clients for me or who I think might uh, have some really specific thoughts about how about this music studio that I am building, this website design business I'm building, this read business I'm starting. Um, so I'm going to like get some opinions and get a little bit of enthusiasm going for me and for the people I'm talking to. I might begin to show up online just a little bit on my regular social medias, but sharing content that is relevant to those people that might be interested in what I'm doing. I'm just like taking baby steps into visibility. I'm looking for one person that I can help 
in the way that I ultimately want to help them. I'm looking for one thing that I can do that gets me closer to that big picture vision. And like, I know Kara had immediate, like step one, step two, step three, go to squarespace.com. That's very concrete. Mine is, is bigger than that because the question is bigger than that, I think. But what I love about it is if you have the idea for the vision, the five years from now vision, you can just start walking towards that, taking small actions. If you can make yourself, if you can peel yourself out a half an hour block daily, three times a week, four times a week to just take actions forward. Maybe it's building a little tiny baby website. Maybe it's just building a page on your existing low function website um, that you can boldly at some point make into a homepage. Maybe it's uh, I'm going to reach out to a mentor or a coach or a, this person that I think I could really help and serve in this way. And like, look for how do I get my first client? Because the second one will feel less messy. And everything will feel easier once you are in motion a little bit. So I like to imagine that that big vision, that like five years out vision is if I'm going for a hike in the woods and my goal is And as I get closer to the top and I can see like over here, but I can see this one and this one and other options, like I might have to get more and more specific about the actions I take. And I might have to divert from time to time and like walk around a big boulder in my path, but I'm still always heading toward that vision. That is how you start. But I am wide, wide open to feedback in the chat about whether that was helpful information, um, how I could be more specifically helpful, or what else would anybody like to know from me and from Kara? I do have a follow-up to that, actually. I love that. Um, I agree that the very first step is just to start. Um, every every endeavor, every business that I've worked on so far, whether it was building up, you know, my freelance business and building up, you know, private studio and, and concerts and gigs, and then diving into, you know, the graphic design website stuff. I very much built it as I went, learned as I learned as I went. And I think I love the idea of, of having that bigger plan, but you know, none of us can see the exact steps it's going to take because yeah, it's just, you take one step and then you realize, oh, this, and then this. And I feel like if we learn as we go, we not only avoid getting stuck, but we actually can have momentum and grow at the same time. And I've, I've certainly done that with my, my stuff. Um, you know, Cara Wolf design, when I first started, I, I was just going to be a graphic designer. And then I I got into it. I had a couple of projects, did some projects for some family members and and really quickly came to find that, you know, everyone was asking about websites. Okay, I guess I, I need to learn websites, you know? And my very first website project, I got, I called a client, a prospective client that I thought, you know, might be interested and asked if they wanted a website and they did. And I was like, great, let's do it. And I literally Googled my way through that project. I'd never done it before. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. and um, it was a little nerve wracking, but of course, you know, it worked out okay. And, and that just kind of led to more, you know, more um, steps within the business. And I learned a lot from that. And then, you know, just, it just, you know, it, and it unfolds within itself. So I think, um, you know, even, even with, um, you know, the, what I'm doing in my business now, I wanted to get more into, you know, online tutorials and growing a YouTube channel. And I mean, my very first video, I just, did quick time on my computer and built in audio. And I was like, I, I don't have time to like figure this out perfectly. Just get something out there, you know? And that, that first video I posted is probably still one of my best ones. You know, it's, it gets a couple conversions here and there. And, um, you know, it, it just, just start. Just start. I like, 
I couldn't agree more. I, I look at my own YouTube channel and I'm, I've just recently embarked on a project of like resurrecting the oldest, the seven year old and eight year old videos that I made and, you know, resharing them to my list. And like, I didn't know how to film a video. Like it's clumsy. I, I, re I distinctly remember using like tape to attach my iPhone to my read making lamp, like just above my above my work surface so that I could focus on my hands with tape. Um, it was a, a messy process, but by doing it, I got better at it. And I was doing it because I was doing it to solve a problem, right? The, the problem that I had when I started my YouTube channel was that people were asking me questions about the reads that I had sent them. I already had a read business. People wanted to know what to do to make their reads easier. So instead of typing it over and over and over again, I started making a YouTube channel with a few little tutorials that I could send people to. And then people loved that. And then that channel, uh, in retrospect, when I look backward at the trajectory, the channel that the YouTube channel that I started was really a straight line to the massive uh, read business that I have now, because people asking me questions led me to uh, create more YouTube videos, people sh showing up for those videos and seeing me as an expert in read making, which like, I'm just a read maker, right? I just, I'm making reads for myself and I'm making reads for other people. It's not like I'm magic, but we are accustomed to seeing a face on a screen as an authority, um, unless they politically disagree with us, in which case we see them as an idiot. Um, but you know, for me to show up with my face in the in the picture actually was another visibility journey that I had along the way. It's it's disconcerting, right? For a long time, I only filmed my hands with reads. Um, but we are accustomed to seeing a face on a screen as an authority. And if you show up providing helpful information in whatever format that is, and it, you will get better at doing that over time, and it can turn into business in ways that you did not expect. It can turn into money. It can turn into connections. It can turn into collaborations like this one that I'm doing with lovely Cara. I think that's actually, um, that actually brings up another excellent point. Something that I've noticed is I feel like a lot of what I've built have, has come from what other people have needed or asked. And I feel like a lot of the services I offer, um, and, and even, you know, what I offer in music, it's, it's all for, it's all a solution that to, to a problem that already exists. So it's not like, you know, we sit around and we're like, okay, what kind of business can I come up with today? You know, how do I build a business? How do I work from home? How do I diversify my income? You know, for me, it's always been, well, you know, someone's asking me, they, they need a website. Okay. I guess I'll learn to make websites. You know, I mean, that's kind of how it started. And, you know, it's, same, same reason I switched from, from WordPress to Squarespace as a platform is, you know, I was building these websites and my clients were struggling to update their sites. And it was like, there's gotta be a better solution. And so it shifted the product that I was selling, the service I was selling. And I think, you know, if you're kind of wondering where to start or how to grow your business, you know, just look outside yourself and say, well, you know, where, what are people asking me on a regular basis? What are some problems that people can't seem to find the solution to, you know? And, um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen, I remember seeing, you know, in the very beginning of my business, when I was, um, really focused on the, my oboe blog, it was the same experience you had. I was literally posting blogs on my website with information so that for my students, right. So I didn't have to like share it over and over again. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, that they're ranking on Google, you know, people are finding my site and other people are finding this information helpful and, you know, and then, okay, well, you know, how can I how can I monetize that? Or do I want to? And I ended up putting in some um, Amazon links and I'm not getting rich off of it, but you know, it pays for my hosting <laughs> at the end of the year, you know, I've been, you know, and, and, you know, so I think that's, that's one really great piece of advice is, you know, what, what problems are you really solving and, and can you turn that into a service or a product? Yes, exactly. Because there are things that we do um, to use, um, so a favorite book of mine is The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. I 
read it over and over again. I talk about it all the time. And one of the concepts he works with is the the zone of genius, the thing that like you do so easily and so joyfully that it like a it lights you up and gives energy back to you when you do it but b that you do it so intuitively and innately that it's shocking to you that other people struggle with it um what's my point my point is this i have, I have a a friends uh, sometimes a client who who makes spreadsheets she makes them just out of her mind I, I say things like, oh, how do you keep track of the, she's an audiobook narrator. How do you keep track of the, the people that you need to network with? She's like, oh, I've got a spreadsheet for that. And like, it's not just a spreadsheet. It's a spreadsheet that has three or four or five sheets on it. And they're all interrelated. And she can like cross-reference by the book she read, the company that did it, the specific person that hired her. And when she last reached out to them to like, network and touch base the most astonishing thing um she's this is a a talent that she has absolutely innately that i cannot even dream of creating a spreadsheet like that for myself but if i went to her with the need that i have she could build something for me just like that that is her zone of genius it is a joy for her to do it and she is like in the path of monetizing that right now because it's so fun and easy for her to do and for you i speak to the general you in the room i bet there is something that all of your friends if they are struggling with it they come to you they're like oh i'm having trouble with i better call barb barb will know the answer <laughs> um <laughs> or having trouble with this ask Barb. There is something out there that you do so easily that everyone else sees. What, uh, what is that? And if you like, can you lean into it and do more of it? Yeah, I think awesome. Um, so do you, do you think, um, we haven't really gotten any more questions in the chat, but you had asked me, Jeanette, some questions, um, some more questions about websites. I don't know if you want to dive into that at all um, at one point. Mm -hmm. I do. I just want to acknowledge in the chat that Angela says, my experience tracks with what Janet said about just starting to show up on YouTube or video-based social media. I do zero editing. My videos are not professional quality, but people seem to like them, which leads to them asking more questions and giving you ideas for more business or for more videos. Yes, the content begets content and showing up with showing up in service, like offering information, offering help, being uh, visible in that way leads to leads to that. All right, I do have a question. Um this is has come up actually for a number of clients and it comes up for me as well your website your professional website as a portfolio career musician which most of us in the room are in some way right we perform and we have a podcast and we have a book and we teach and we have a read business and we develop websites and like all of the things that we do how should we be thinking about like building a separate online entity for all of the separate things we're doing like should i have separate social media for my podcast versus my life should i have separate uh an entirely separate website with a brand new url that people come to if they want reads versus if they want coaching and like this is not just about me i've had this conversation with so many people what is your like be and and this comes up for me all the time. I'm in the process of a website redesign assisted by Kara. And this is the first time since I initially like built my own website and got it out, so out of control that I had to have it professionally redesigned. This is the first time I'm trying to do a redesign myself. And it's a little intimidating. What, how do we separate those elements and do we need to build separate things? That's my basic question. 
That is such a good question. And actually a question I get often as well. Um, so to break it down, basically your website, you can combine multiple things into one website. Uh, where you may want a second one is if you're marketing something to an entirely different audience. So think more about the audience that you're serving versus the product you're selling um, or the service you're selling. So for example, if you are teaching lessons and selling reads and you have a podcast, and I mean, all these things can go on one website if they're all for oboe players, you know, if they're all for, um, you know, if they're all for woodwind players, if it's like within one niche. Now, if you are doing oboe stuff and, you know, selling reads and teaching and, and have gigs and all that's on one website, but you also, you know, are like me and you have website design as well. That's an entirely separate website because it's an entirely separate audience. Now, are there oboist and musicians that might want a website? Well, yes, but when a prospective person, let's say we have an oboist and that oboist wants read making lessons, and maybe that one in a million oboist also happens to want a website, they're not in the same headspace, right? If they're coming to you for oboe lessons and read help, they're in a particular headspace. They're not even thinking about their website. And that's if they even want one. So from a marketing perspective, your website is a, a landing place where you can say, here's some information take action. Here's the action I want you to take. So the idea being that, you know, a website, we want to give people a very clear direction of the action we want them to take. So even within your business of multiple things, like I mentioned before, you still have to have a high priority on your website. You know, what's your primary conversion? Are you selling something? Are you trying to get students? But as long as that audience, as long as that they want multiple things, you can have one website. Now, I'll give an example of my business. Um, I have, you know, my website, Carl Wolf Design, and it was a business um, that was, you know, marketing agency where I'm, you know, advertising and, and trying to reach small businesses in Durango, Colorado. And I decided I wanted to focus more on Squarespace websites. So that within itself is a niche. And then within that, I want to focus on musicians, right? So marketing website design and graphic design and things to local Durango businesses is a completely different market than reaching creatives and musicians online who specifically will benefit from a Squarespace website. So it's two completely different audiences. Now there is a crossover. Um, technically I am selling website design, but it's to two completely different audiences. And I have two completely different marketing strategies. So my my local website, I've optimized it for local SEO. It ranks in local search engines. I have the word Durango plastered all over it. Um, I have it designed in a way where it looks a little more corporate-y. It, it, it looks a little more agency, you know, trying to go to these small businesses that have staff and employees versus my Squarespace website is a little more creative, a little more fun. I have um, a lot of, you know, musician websites featured. It's just a completely different audience. So and the same goes for online profiles. I mean, in general, if you have multiple businesses that are being directed to the same audience, always stay on one website with, with one channel of social media, right? Because the more website, if you have, you know, five different websites and five different social media profiles on Instagram, I mean, it's, it gets really complicated really fast um, and very time consuming. So definitely the more things can be consolidated, the better. And, but if you really, truly are reaching, trying to reach a completely different audience, um, with a different product, then yeah, it's worth having that separate entity. Um, that being said, you know, I think one thing that, that gets overlooked with website design is a website can have sort of a front end approach and a back end approach. So for example, um, I, I only have one social media for my, my website design, right? Like I don't have a separate profile for Carl Wolf design and a whole nother one for my Squarespace business. It just, I didn't want to deal with that many profiles. So my, my local business, Carl Wolf design is just out there. The purpose of that website is to be found on Google. Um, I, I will drive traffic to it. If a local company reaches out to me, I will send them the link. So that website 
is a base for search engine traffic and direct traffic, but all of my social media traffic is going to my other website. So I have sort of, my websites have different, um, they're, they're part of different marketing strategies. Um, uh, my, uh, websites by Cara, for example, um, the homepage right now is very much designed around one-on-one -on -one services. That's sort of my primary goal and objective on that site. But on the back end, I mean, I have, um, a ton of pages on there that, you know, I have my product pages for my templates. I have, um, you know, resources and, and libraries of videos, and I direct traffic to that for my email list, sometimes from social media. Um, so I think a website, there's sort of the front facing objective. There's your homepage, there's, um, the people, you know, the actions you're trying to get people to, to take on that homepage and, and the audience that you're trying to reach, but a website can be, can have different uses. You know, you can have pages that maybe aren't featured on the homepage, but you're, you know, pretty much, you know, sending traffic to it through your email list on a regular basis. And maybe you don't even send traffic to those pages through social media. Maybe you're just, you know, your email marketing, you know, people are going to convert on a particular page. So you're just directing traffic to those pages. And so I don't know if that, if that helps, but definitely I think, you know, the simplified version really is, is it the same audience or do you, is it a different audience? And if it's the same audience, you have everything on one website. And if it's a completely different audience, go for two websites. That I love that you like blew that question wide open um, because just listening to you talk about the two separate websites that you have and the intention that you have behind them and the way that you are driving, uh, driving them, like, that just sounds like so much more intentionality than I've ever put into any of the things that I do. Um, so much intentionality and clear headedness. So I really, really lo love that. And then that you brought it back to, it's about the audience. And it made me realize that I have always thought differently about that question. I have thought about, you know, I do 27 different things, but the intersection of all of those things is me and i figure that i figure that oboists also want to be happiest musicians and happy musicians also want to be artists and uh some people want to buy reeds and so i have always just built everything off of my one jenningle.com site and you are making me realize that it would be wise for me to split that up into two for two different audiences. Look, I'm learning things in this Ask Me Anything session. <laughs> well, one one interesting take on that, I think actually it's worth bringing up a, a few more points on that. Um, so one thing to consider is, is I do think there is power behind a personal brand. I mean, you know, I have my music website and I have my music profiles that are like me, Cara, the oboist. And then I have, you know, my Cara Wolf design profiles and um, you know, my goal is to eventually probably take Carl Wolf Design off the internet and just focus on Squarespace websites for musicians. Um, but there's a transition period right now. Um, but one thing to mention is, I, I guess, is a something to consider for for someone such as yourself or someone who is thinking, well, maybe it is worth two websites. So, brand new domains. If you decide you want a second website. Brand new domains take a while to build domain authority. So a website that's been out there for a while, you know, it's ranking on Google, it's been indexed, you can put a blog post up or update your content or like what you're doing, completely redo your website. And if it's on the so same domain, it will continue to rank. Um, I think one question, this is actually slightly off topic, but one question I get is, well, if I build a brand new website, is it going to like kill my Google rankings? And the, the answer is, not if you keep the same domain. If you have the same domain and you build a completely new website, Google just looks at that as fresh content, you know? So it actually should help your SEO rankings. But a brand new domain, like I went I went in and I built out my website for Websites by Cara last year and literally purchased a brand new domain. So I'm having to build that up by scratch. And it does take quite a bit of time. So one of the reasons I left my old website up to to continue getting clients is because, you know, local clients are my bread and butter right now, right? Those one-on-one -on -one local clients are still the bulk of my business. So I 
And, you know, if I had taken that website and rather than creating a whole new domain and a whole new website, if I had transferred Carl Wolf design to Squarespace and just redesigned the website around, you know, musicians and Squarespace, you know, websites for musicians, I, I felt like I was going to lose, I, I still needed somewhere to direct my local clients, right? Because I didn't want to send my local clients to my new website because it's a different audience. And while that would have kept my domain ranking, um, it yeah, then I would have lost that that point of contact. So, you know, one thing to put out there is, yes, if you feel like you really need to reach a new audience, it's worth it in the long run. But like my new website is, it's it's ranking, it's getting there. Um, but it is still far behind my other website, which has been online for 10 years. I mean, it's when you, I still get all of my um, contact inquiries through my old website, because even if people find me on social media, they go and Google me and they get my other website because it's still outranking my new one. Um, long-term it will catch up, but 10 years online, my old website's been up for 10 years. I mean, my new website's been up for less than a year. It's just it's going to take a lot of time to build that. So I think that's one, one thing to consider when, when you're deciding between, um, yeah, keeping everything on one site versus, you know, maybe adding a page versus yeah. building a whole new website is, um, is it, is your audience, you know, just thinking long-term, you know, if, if you're really invested in a different audience, it's completely worth building up that domain ranking, but basically be forewarned your, your new website won't even index be indexed on Google for three months you know, let alone rank. Um, so that's been an interesting journey and I don't regret doing it that way. It's definitely long-term where I want to go. Cause like you said, I, you know, I put some thought into it. Um, you know, when I first started my, my business, uh, my original graphic design business, I mean, like we mentioned before, I just started, just put a website up and put some services up and started taking projects. And this, last business that I just launched, the websites by car was the first one that I really thought about in advance. <laughs> like I actually took time to think, what are the problems I'm solving? Um, I did a lot of market research. I asked a lot of questions. I put together a marketing strategy and thought through a short-term plan and a long-term plan and really decided, you know, I got very clear on my target audience and who am I selling to and what am I selling? And it's been very rewarding. It's been very successful, but that was the first time, I mean, the first 10 years of my business, I was kind of just winging it, honestly. And this is this Squarespace business that I've kind of launched. I, I made a very tactical pivot for very specific reasons and it's been great, but I, that's the first time I ever really got that specific about it. That is super interesting and like helps me to feel a little bit better about my own <clears throat> 22 year path to overnight success where like I just have constantly felt like I'm just making it up as I go along the whole entire time. And I love hearing that like you who are also successful um, have won it for a long time. And then like as a grown up, became more thoughtful and strategic and intentional about it. That yeah, Angela says 15 years deep and still winging it too. Yeah, we're just like all making it up as we go along. This is I did not know what to expect from this ask me anything session um because this is the first time we're first time we're doing it uh but like i'm getting a ton of value let me ask the room um because i i see some people and i see some names are are you getting valuable information here and is there a different direction that you would like us to go in for our last few minutes here how can we be helpful is there anything coming up for you that is like, um, wow, that reminds me of a question I had, or boy, I wish they would just talk about the oboe already. <laughs> or uh, is anything coming up for you? So I wonder while we're giving everyone a second to put some, maybe some notes in the chat, if we get any, any suggestions in there, um, Jeanette, how would you feel about me answering? We got via email, a question about some, uh, about Celtic music on the oboe, um, mm -hmm. ooh, recommendations for domain registrations for new websites. That's a great one. Um, maybe I'll answer that first. Go. Yeah. So for domain registration, 
it depends. It depends if you just want to hang on to a domain for a little while, or if you want to do it alongside a website. So website providers, website hosts, such as Squarespace or Wix that give you the opportunity to actually build your site. They allow you to actually register a domain and connect that domain to your website while you're, while you're launching. So if you know you want to dive into website design right away, I would recommend registering that domain with the provider you're going to use. So for example, if you know you want to use Squarespace, maybe you've heard of the platform or you find a template and you know you want to use it, um, I would either go ahead and build your website. And when it comes time to launch it, they they literally ask you, do you have a domain? And you can say, no, I don't. And you can pick one and register it right then and there and set it all up. Um, or Squarespace, for example, they you can just go in and register a domain, um, even without a website and hold on to it for a year if you want, and then come back and build your Squarespace website. If you know that you're not going to need a website for a while, but you just, you're like, there's a domain out there. I want to save it. I want to make sure no one steals it. Um, you can honestly, you could do something like GoDaddy or Namecheap. These are basically super cheap um, domain registrations that you can just, you know, go and register your domain and hold on to it for three years. Um, you can transfer these domains to Squarespace when you're ready or to Wix when you're ready. So if you want to park your domain at GoDaddy for three years and then you finally get around to doing your website, you can transfer it. It's not like you're stuck, but it's really handy to um, register your domain while you're launching your site if if you're doing everything from scratch. So I'd recommend holding off and doing it alongside your website launch or using something like GoDaddy or Namecheap if you're just parking it for the long term. Great, super clear. Yeah, we got okay. one more in here. Uh, yep, I see it. Angela says, I need to adjust my pricing and rates. How do you determine your rates? I'm probably missing the basics in this area. Oh my God. Well, uh, how long do we have here? There's, There are so many factors to think about uh, with your pricing and your rates. Let me just name like a few, a few thoughts that I have. <laughs> Number one is that a lot of people start name start their pricing and their rates by like looking around at the other businesses that are in their immediate area and basing on that and then lots of people never adjust them again which is a little dangerous i think both of those ideas are a little bit dangerous because if i'm say going to be teaching private lessons and i look around my community at what everyone else is charging thing one um, if I just sort of put myself in the middle of that, what I have done is I've anchored my pricing to other people's money mindset challenges, right? And to, uh, and I've anchored my pricing based on what other people are doing, which like, isn't necessarily what I am doing unless I have sat in on all of those lessons and I know exactly what kind of value is being offered and exactly how magical the teaching is and exactly what kind of results that teacher is getting for their students i don't that like i can't base my own value on that the value that i offer as a teacher is different from the value that marjorie down the street offers as a teacher we might be looking at different populations of students we might be looking at different um, objectives that those students have. We might be offering our our services in different ways, like in a combination of one-to-one -one and group. There are, are a million things that could be going on in Marjorie's world that dictate why she is pricing the way that she is. That is not a reason to for me to price like her. So one thing is I'm gonna always come down on the side of musicians, trained, talented musicians getting paid more for the things that they do because we have such a value. So I might start with what is the value of what I am offering? Angela, I know you're, you're in repair, right? So what is it worth to me 
to have my instrument well maintained and like effortlessly playing, it is worth the world. I will pay so much for a person who is talented at keeping my instrument in great repair. If my swab gets stuck and I cannot extract it myself, what is the value to me in having that problem solved by tomorrow morning? I would pay any amount. It might take you only five minutes of your actual time to get my swab de stuck, but I would pay hundreds of dollars to have my oboe working again for my gig tomorrow morning. Um, and the more experienced and the more skilled you are in the work that you are doing, the more I am willing to pay for it. Right. Because I respect that I'm about to pay someone who's not going to spend uh, eight hours sort of hunting and pecking around my instrument looking for the right screw to turn. I am delighted to pay for someone who's like, yes, I know exactly what your problem is and how to fix it. So if you are looking at other people for your pricing, I suggest looking at them, but then also asking yourself, where do you want to be positioned in that market? Do you want to be in a race to the bottom pricing wise so that people who are shopping on price will come to you? Or do you want to be the person who an, a neutral third party looks at the list of repair possibilities in the area and goes, oh, I want that one. They're expensive. They must be good. Those are a few things that I have on this. And I actually put a podcast mini sewed out this morning on the same topic, actually, because um, I'm always going to be in favor of people getting paid well for expert work. I hope that is helpful. I could talk literally all day. And Angela, I hope you will email me so that we can talk all day about that. And I completely, I completely agree with that as well. It's, um, Something, something in the the marketing side of stuff that I've seen a lot of you know talks on and webinars on and, and thoughts on and everything from pricing your your services to your private lessons to you know over the years I mean the number of times I've increased my rates you know I started off lower when I was just starting just to build up that that portfolio and I've increased it but it's it's all about that value I mean if you worry oh someone's gonna balk at the price it's like well yeah but what's it worth to have that perfectly playing instrument I mean I've um, a few years ago, I was working with um, an online um, physical therapy coach um, for um, a back injury, and um, which I've talked about a lot online. And you know, he he had pretty high prices for his one-on-one -on -one recovery program, but I didn't even blink at it. It was like, what? What? There's no price on being able to get back to playing the oboe. So I think um, I love what she said here about um, uh, I starting to see it as I will punch your problems in the face. <laughs> but that's exactly what it is, is when you are talking to, um, you know, communicating your your message online or talking to a prospective client one-on-one, -on -one, it's not, well, what does it cost? It's like, well, I, I can fix that for you perfectly. And then here's my price. The price doesn't even matter at that point. So I think if anything, we, we do tend to undercharge, but absolutely 100% agree with everything you said on that. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Y'all, I loved this session. Um, Cara, where can people find you? And do you have anything coming up that you want to talk about? Um, what What would you like to share as our final words here? Absolutely. Um, so the best, best way to reach me is you can go to my website, websitesbycara.com. And that's K-H-A-R-A. -A. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, but I'm also on social media. I've got Instagram, Facebook, all the usuals. You can really easily find me online. If you Google me and my other website comes up, just send me a contact form through that. <laughs> um, variety of ways to get to me. And yeah, I for anyone that has additional website questions, um, I think for the person that asked me about the Celtic oboe stuff, I still I'm going to email you. I still want to respond to that. But um, yeah, you can reach me via email, social media. And I think the exciting thing coming up is I am launching my first musician Squarespace website template um, next week. It's going live next week. And it's this particular one is centered around um, performing artists. And I have um, one on my store already that was a collaboration project. Um, and it's a template for studio 
um, musicians that are building private studios. So, you know, the website thing, if you're looking for a custom template for websites, um, I've found that there are not nearly enough music templates online, especially for classical musicians. Um, most of the templates out there are geared for bands or singer songwriters. And I just feel like as a community, we just don't have the resources to build ourselves these beautiful music templates that we want. They just don't exist. So I'm aiming to change that. First one goes live next week. And, um, but I'm here for questions too. And Jeanette, what would you like to finish off with? <laughs> well, thank you. Um, you know, the first thing I want to mention is that I'm going to do another Ask Me Anything event next month because um, I was excited by this. This was Kara's idea originally, but I'm taking it and running. So I'll be live on Zoom on May 9th at one o'clock. And if you're on my email list, which I believe you are, you will hear about this um, with Ashley Danu, who uh, runs the, the business musician and company, which is a lot of help for like sort of uh, I can't even put words on it. Um, a lot of contracts and templates and useful financial information for musician entrepreneurs. Um, we're going to be doing a similar event to this a month from now. And my big offer for you is I would just love to speak with you. Um, I love talking with musicians about how they can amplify, optimize, improve the careers that they have. Um, I do absolutely do one-to-one -one business coaching for musicians. I love this. And so I am just sharing a link to book a short call with me. No strings, just a conversation. Um, and of course, you can find me at JanetIngle.com for all of the various things that I do and at Crushing Classical, where I have a money mindset episode out today. Um, Y'all, thank you so much for being here with us today. I hope this was enjoyable. I hope it was helpful. And have a great day. Bye. <laughs> Bye.